Okay, here we go. Section 5.1, the basics of statistics. We are learning about three important words that we use to describe a data set. Okay, the mean, the median, and the mode. And then we're going to use those, uh, or parts of those, to help us draw box plots. Okay, so here's the data set uh, representing uh, the time it takes for 15 or 14 people to drive to their nearest bookstore, we'll say, all right? Round to the nearest whole minute. So I've done the, um, uh, the simplification of putting them in order. Um, so if you get a data set that's uh, just sort of randomly dispersed, you want to maybe put them in order to help make sense of it, particularly when it comes to finding the middle value, the median. But right now, to find the mean, we're going to add these all up and divide by how many there are. Uh, we uh, can use this symbol here. This is a mathematical symbol to mean sum up. We're going to add up all the x's, and then we're going to divide by how many there are. So to add these all up, we get 182, I believe. You can check on the calculator. And then we're going to divide by, let's say, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Divide by 13, and we get, I believe, exactly 14 if you divide that in. All right. So it doesn't always have to work out perfectly, um, but taken for us decimals to maybe two decimal places is good. So 14 is our average, and this symbol, x bar, is what we'll use to represent that. Okay? The median is the middle value. If there are 13, the middle value is my seventh one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here is the median value. Okay? So that's the middle, and that equals 10. Okay? Then the mode is the number that occurs most often, and this one just happens to be 7. Sometimes the mode is a useful, most often, or as we did uh, mode, we can just make that D into an R and make it more often repeating, most often, and that's 7, all right? Uh, sometimes a very useful number, sometimes rather misleading. In this case, it doesn't really tell us about the center of this, um, but yet there it is, all right? So now, to find a box plot based on a data set you are going to do the following set of rules, uh, set of steps. First thing is uh, find the median, okay, which we have done. And we're then we're going to look at the entire uh, range of the data from 6 to 39. So to graph this, I'm going to make a graph. I'll try to make it as big as possible. Hope that shows up. And I'm going to go from 0 to 40. And then carefully, there's my 20, there's my 10, there's my 30, okay? And then I'm just going to make a small light line at the median value. The middle value is right here at 10, okay? And there's 10. And then I'm going to find the upper and the lower quartile. To do that, I ignore that middle value, and I find the median of the lower half and the median of the upper half. Well, the median of the lower half counting in three from each end, I split the difference, in which case there is none, and it's seven right there. That's Q1. Q1 is equal to seven. If I do the same thing here, Q3 is equal to 15. I'm splitting the difference there. And this is Q2, but that's my median. So my upper and my lower quartiles, I'm going to graph those. So there's five, six, seven is right there. And then 15 is right here. Okay, and I'm now able to draw the box part of my box and whisker plot. Okay, so I make a box, and I can label this as the middle value. And there's my 10. And now the question is, do I have any outliers, all right? Outliers are data points that are, for some reason, just not representative or not considered a fair representation of this data. Um, we use the Michael Jordan example in class. If I um, want to know if these are outliers, what I do is I figure out what is this difference between the two Q values, Q3 and Q1. That's um, plot Q1 and Q3. And then step three is find what's called the inter- Quartile, quartile range, IQR, and that is just a matter of subtracting Q3 minus Q1. 
which in this case is 15 minus 7 equals 8. So the range between Q1 and Q3 is simply 8. All right? So it's a pretty simple concept. What is the dis difference? What's the numerical difference between my Q3 and Q1? Oh, that's Q1. Okay. Well, when I've done that, then I take and multiply this. Multiply um, interquartile range, IQR, times 1.5. Okay, that's the magic number. Why 1.5? Well, the statistician that invented this basically said because two, 2 is too big and 1 is too small. We want to establish what's called a fence that's at the boundary of what is like a reasonable data for us. So 1.5 times 8, uh, in this case, equals 12. And so I go 12 beyond 15. So 15 plus 12 is where my fence is. So 12 plus 15 is 27. So I'm going to go right here, put up my fence. And then I'm going to go 12 below 7 to negative 5, which is unreasonable because I'm never going to drive negative 5 miles. But nevertheless, we've got a nice healthy range in which to be um, acceptable there. And I then plot my outermost point. 39 is way up here. That is too far out there. That is an outlier. 33 is also an outlier. It's right here. But 16 is not. So that's only one unit beyond. That's a short little whisker, but that's what happens in real life. And then my other whisker is at 6, and that's right about here. Um, actually, that's also a short little whisker. That's only one unit below 7. So this particular example has tiny little whiskers. It's a well-shaven uh, critter. And this is uh, clearly, these guys are barely out, outliers, too far out. But um, that um, is how you do a box and whisker plot. You'll see in your own data sets that sometimes you have not got any outliers. Sometimes we'll have more than one. In this case, we have two. So don't let that throw you off. The main thing is how far you put these fences to determine whether or not something is an outlier. And again, that is right here. It is the difference between your Q1 and Q3 times 1.5. That tells you how far on either side of your quartiles you put that fence.